Hello, I'm Keith R. Avi Candido, and welcome to the latest episode of Crad COVID Readings. Uh, this week I'm doing sort of a little, I don't know if you call it a theme really, but I'm going to be doing uh, stories from 14, 13, and 12 years ago. <laughs> um, uh, I had a lot of short stories published in the aughts, and uh, so I'm going to start this week with a 2006 short story uh, today, and then Wednesday will be a 2007 one, and Friday will be a 2008 one. Uh, in 2006, uh, my reputation for writing fast and hitting deadlines uh, served me well, because uh, Gene Raby and uh, the late Brian Thompson were putting together an anthology called Furry Fantastic, which was basically fantastical stories about furry creatures. <laughs> and uh, the anthology came up short in word count, and I needed another story very quickly, and Gene got in touch with me, and I gave them the story you are about to hear, which is called Sunday in the Park with Spot. Can I hear a story, please? All right, one story. And that's it. Then you must sleep. Just one? Yes, just one, and be thankful for that. But, okay, just one then. You promise to go right to sleep after that? Yes, ma'am. Good. In that case, I will tell you a story that takes place in a mythical land called the Bronx. Where's the Bronx? It's in a magical city known as New York. The Bronx is the northernmost region of that fair city populated by a good portion of the folk, as well as many other strange beings, fish and fowl, mam mammal and invertebrate. Perhaps the most baffling are the ones called humans. They are charming, peculiar creatures who believe themselves to be the only intelligent people in the world when they, in fact, have very little to do with the day-to-day -day reality. Why do they think that? That is one of the great mysteries. However, they do perform several useful functions they provide food and shelter for many of the folk, and they also have produced some remarkable healers. In particular, they have done much to aid the cat and dog population. Well, cats make sense, but why dogs? That is another of the great mysteries, but this one has a likely solution. Dogs are fiercely loyal. Humans tend to reward such behavior. But cats aren't loyal to anything. True, but cats treat those who provide for them well. Humans are not particularly bright specimens, and they probably mistake that kind of treatment for the same loyalty they observe in dogs. Well, that makes sense. Now, please don't interrupt anymore. Sorry. Our story takes us to one house in a neighborhood in the Bronx known as Riverdale. Many folk lived in this region, including the chief chaos wrangler, Mittens. On one fine Sunday afternoon, a day when most humans remain at home to care for their domiciles and tend to the needs of the folk, Mittens received a sign. Now, chaos wranglers, you must understand, cannot always predict when they will need to ply their trade. By its very nature, chaos is random and indefinable. And so, the times when it must be curtailed can come out at the most inconvenient moments. On this day, Mittens found himself with the usual indicator that there would be a shift in the chaotic winds, an itch behind his left ear, and that he would need to move quickly. The first thing he had to do was confirm the shift by tracing the sigils. Naturally, this Mittens humans did not understand this behavior. They were a pair who had made it male and female, named Bob and Sue. Those are really weird names. Well, so's Mittens, actually. Humans have very bizarre customs regarding nomenclature. Unfortunately, the rules of hospitality state that the one providing shelter also provides the name for those who dwell under that shelter, no matter how ridiculous those names might be. So it has always been. That's a silly rule. What did I say about interruptions, especially foolish ones? I didn't say anything about foolish ones, but I did tell you not to interrupt. Now be silent. Sue saw that Mittens was tracing the sigils, but humans are not terrifically bright creatures, and so she said, Oh, Mittens, what's gotten into you this time? From another room, Bob said, What's the little guy doing now, sweetie? Eh, just his usual gadding about. I swear, I don't know what gets into that cat sometimes. You did feed him, right? In a long-suffering tone, Sue said, Yes, dear, of course I fed him. Just checking. You want me to take out the pooch? 
What's a cooch? If you stopped interrupting, I'd tell you. Cooch is a human term for a dog. You see, Bob and Sue sheltered a dog as well as a cat. While Mittens lived inside their abode, their dog, who was called Spot, spent most of his time in the outdoor expanse behind their shelter. He had his own small shelter, which Sue had constructed for him. The humans, whatever their other failings, are fine craftspeople. In response to Bob's question, Sue said, Let me give him his food first, then he can take him out. Good, that gives me time for a shower. Before you interrupt again, I will explain. A shower is something else the humans have built. It is a device they use to groom themselves by pouring water on their persons. Pouring water? That's icky. Why do that on purpose? It is yet another mystery about humans. May I continue without interruption? Sorry. Sue poured food into the receptacle designated for Spot. In a shelter behind the abode, Spot heard the distinctive clank of the dry food against the metal of the receptacle and immediately forgot whatever he was doing and ran for the abode, with thoughts only of food dancing in his head. Meanwhile, Mittens had been paying very close attention to the exchange between Sue and Bob, even as he collated the data from his tracing of the sigils. The news that Bob was planning to take Spot out heartened Mittens, as it meant he himself would not need to sneak out. Mittens had clandestinely left the shelter a few times, and it only served to worry the humans unnecessarily. They tended to obsess over Mittens' safety when he was not in their domicile, <laughs> as if cats could not survive on their own away from mere, their humans. Still, Mittens knew that Bob and Sue's hearts were in the right place, misguided though those fears may be, and he was loath to put them in such a position. Spot would make that unnecessary. Though, there were attendant risks in trusting a dog. After Spot ran in and shoved his face into the receptacle, dogs have no sense of finesse when it comes to matters culinary. It's rather embarrassing, really. Mittens finished grooming himself and waited for Sue to finish patting Spot on the head and saying, Good dog, Spot! Humans tend to praise folk for doing what comes naturally for some odd reason. Once Sue left, Mittens approached Spot while the latter was gorging himself. I have a task for you, the cat said. The dog looked up from his food. A job? I like jobs. Jobs are fun. Thank you for trusting me with the job. What's the job mean? What do I do? When do I do it? I will tell you, Mitten said patiently. Bob will be taking you to the park for a run. A run? I love runs. Runs are great fun. I get to run this way and that, and sometimes if I'm really lucky, I get to chase a stick or a ball. I love doing that. Yes, and you should enjoy it as much as you want especially as it will make Bob happy as well. You think so? Spot seemed thrilled by the very idea. That'd be great! However, you must do something else. Spot was confused for a moment, then said, Right! The job! I remember now. You want me to do a job? Spot then realized he was parched and padded over to the water dish. After lapping up some water, he turned back to Mittens. I will do this job for you! With that, he started to walk off but Mitten stepped in front of the dog before he could go out the door. I haven't told you the job yet, Spot. Oh, right, I'll need that, won't I? Okay, tell me what the job is so I can do it for you. Grateful that he now had Spot's undivided attention, Mittens explained the job. When Bob takes you to the park, you must find the squirrel named Tail Drop. That's a different name. Are the squirrels humans smarter? I'm afraid not. For whatever reason, humans do not shelter squirrels. They are self-sheltering by nature, and also tend to prefer the outdoors more often than not. As a result, they choose their own names. However, it also makes them useful helpmeets for the Chaos Wranglers. Mittens explained to Spot, You must find Tail Drop, and then tell her to trace the Order sig Sigil at the World Tree at precisely the time of sunset. Order Sigil, World Tree, Sunset. Got it! Won't be any problem. I'll do just what you ask, Mittens, you betcha. There's one important thing. Mittens hesitated, because too much information might be rough on the dog, but he needed to know this. The information can be passed on to any gray squirrel you meet, in case you don't find Tail Drop, but it's very important that you do not share this with the black squirrel. Not the black squirrel, Spot nodded. No problem. I'll do it. You betcha. 
Prince was concerned, but Spot had a good heart and a noble soul. He would do the right thing. When Spot was done eating, and after Bob had altered his protective covering, he attached a tether to Spot's collar and took him out of the abode to a grassland that the humans had named Ewan Park. Why a tether? More of that worrying that humans indulge in so much. They fear that their folk will be endangered if they are not physically linked. Bob, however, only kept the tether on until they arrived at Ewan Park. This grassland had several sections, one of which was bordered by fences and intended for dogs to roam free. Most humans don't have wide open spaces for dogs to run in, and they are folk who enjoy such, so some humans will bring their dogs to such grasslands. For a while, Spot was happy to run after a stick that Bob would toss across the grassland, intending for Spot to retrieve it. And this action made Spot happy, as Bob was happy, and he got to run free. After the fifth time he retrieved the stick, the sight of a squirrel running across reminded Spot that he had a job to do. Unfortunately, Spot found he couldn't remember the specifics beyond the fact that he had to talk to a squirrel. He thought back to his conversations with Mittens, even as he ran to fetch the stick another time. For sure he knew he had to tell a squirrel to trace the sigils for order at the World Tree. Spot had no idea which one was the World Tree, but he also knew that such matters were not for dogs. That was the type of thing cats worried about. Dogs had much more important jobs, like fetching sticks and running in circles. Finally, Spot remembered something very important, the black squirrel. Spot didn't know the squirrel's name, but there was only one black squirrel that made its home in Ewan Park, and Spot now knew with complete certainty that the black squirrel was the one he had to talk to. Mittens had made a very special point of it. Unfortunately, the black squirrel was nowhere to be found. Spot kept searching every time he fetched the stick, but no black squirrel. Plenty of gray ones including one who looked familiar, though Spot couldn't for the life of him remember who it was, but no sign of the black. Bob started talking to another human by the name of Louie, who sheltered Buford and Cello. Spot always liked Buford, who was big and friendly and loud. Cello was small and annoying, though, and Spot didn't like him very much. Spot started talking about how much he liked Buford and didn't like, started thinking, excuse me, about how much he liked Buford and didn't like Cello, until he caught sight of a pigeon flying down toward the benches where humans sometimes sat and threw food to the ground. Although Spot found pigeon, pigeons to be vile folk, he also knew that they saw things nobody else did from the air. So he went over to one pigeon and asked her, Have you seen the black squirrel? The pigeon gazed up at him with confusion. What are you talking about, Spot? Why would you want to talk to Fantail? Spot remembered that that was the, one of, that was the black squirrel's name and that he never liked that name but he never liked Mittens as a name either. To answer the pigeon's question, Spot said, Mittens told me to. I doubt that very much, the pigeon said, cooing with laughter. He did too. Mittens was very specific. He told me to tell Fantail to trace the order tree in the sigils world, or rather the order sigils in the world tree. Cautiously, because she didn't want to anger the dog that was so much bigger than her, the pigeon said, I doubt that very much, Spot. Mittens is the chaos wrangler. Fantail is an agent of chaos. He is absolutely the wrong person to give this information to. <laughs> Spot looked down his muzzle at the pigeon. That shows what you know, you stupid pigeon. Mittens was very precise and made sure to mention Fantail by name. Spot knew that was a slight fib, as Mittens hadn't given the black squirrel's name. But the pigeon didn't need to know that. She just needed to tell Spot where Fantail was. But the pigeon was much smarter than the dog. Wouldn't take a lot. He'd been doing so well with the interruptions. Sorry, but the dog is just so dumb. It's not the dog's fault. It is in their nature to be easily distracted. Still, Spot was Mitten's best option despite the risks. After all, time was of the essence. It was already mid-afternoon. And if Taildrop didn't trace the order sigils in the world tree, the consequences would be very dire indeed. In any event, the pigeon was smarter than the dog, but the dog didn't appreciate that. Pigeons are not among the birds sheltered by humans. Why would anybody shelter a bird? Oh, plenty of humans do. It's another of their mysteries. They shelter beings whose sole purpose is to fly through the air and then put them in cages so they cannot roam free. But pigeons, for whatever reason, are not among those they so imprison. 
In fact, most humans view them as necessary evils, not appreciating their value as scouts and observers among the folk. They are always watching, and when necessary, marking those items that people warrant or people that warrant further attention from the folk. So then what happened? Did the dog find the black squirrel? Sadly, yes, though the pigeon did everything she could to dissuade him. Spot was convinced that Fantail was the squirrel he needed to talk to, rather than the one he should avoid. So when he caught sight of the black squirrel, he ran to him as fast as his paws could take him. Bob was engaged in his conversation with Lou and did not notice Spot's bolting. The pigeon took matters into her own wings by flying close to Bob's head, which distracted the human, and enabled him to observe Spot running away from the fenced area and down toward the paved pathway that humans used to walk through the park. Why would anybody pave a park? Or is that another one of those human mysteries? Are you continuing to avoid to ask ridiculous questions in order to avoid sleep? No, no, honest. Is it just that humans don't make sense? Yes. Humans are incomprehensible and not very bright. It's usually best to simply accept the offerings they provide and otherwise try to ignore them. Now then, Spot had sighted Fantail and so ran toward him. The black squirrel was surprised. He was usually shunned by the canine population, but this one was glumphing toward him with enthusiasm usually reserved for a retrieving a round ball thrown by a human. Fantail twitched his nose in anticipation. He saw one of two possibilities. The first was that the dog had switched sides and wanted to help Fantail. The second, and more likely, was that the dog had made a terrible mistake. Hello! You're Fantail, right? Aren't you? I hope so. I've got something I need to tell you. Yes, that's me, Fantail said. I'm that squirrel. Yes, I am. Please, go ahead. Tell me. Go on. This is really important. I've got a message for you, and it's from Mittens, the Chaos Wrangler. The black squirrel's nose twitched again. It was definitely option number two. Mittens would never send an emissary to talk to Fantail. They were mortal enemies, serving opposite masters. The black squirrel was on the side of chaos, after all. He assured Spot, I'm listening. Go ahead. Tell me. I'm wrapped. Spot paused a second. He knew this was very important to Mittens, and he hated the idea of letting anyone down. So he wanted to make sure he got the message exactly right. Okay, here it is. You need to go to the world tree and trace the otter signals. Fantail managed to resist the urge to rub his claws together and bob his tail up and down. It wouldn't do for this dog, regardless of how dim he seemed, to be aware of just how spectacularly he had screwed up. World Tree, Otter Sigils, good. When? That brought Spot sh up short. When? Yes, the squirrel said. When? Need to know. Tell me. When? Spot panicked. He couldn't remember that part. Most of it he remembered. He remembered that Mittens told him to tell the black squirrel about the sigils in the World Tree, and that he had to fetch the stick every time Bob threw it that he was hungry again. He remembered all of that, but when had fallen right out of his head. Just then, Bob cried out, Spot, what are you doing over there? Come on, boy, we gotta get home before it gets dark. Those words brought it home for Spot. Midnight, I remember now. Mitten specifically said that at the precise moment of total darkness, right at midnight, that's it. This time, Fantail didn't stop bother stopping himself from rubbing his claws together. The stupid dog had played right into his hands. Obviously, the Chaos Wrangler had divined the Black Squirrel's spellcasting tomorrow morning and planned to counter it at midnight with the Otter Sigils. Fantail would simply go to the World Tree at midnight and trace the Sigils himself. As an agent of Chaos, the Sigils would have a much different effect if he traced them than they would from one of those annoying gray squirrels. They're really Otter Sigils? Of course. Why do you think that otters swim in such precise patterns? Well, then how can the black squirrel trace them in a tree? If you stop interrupting, you'll find out. I'm sorry. Now then, Bob put the tether back on Spot when he caught up to the dog, and the pair of them went back to Bob and Sue's shelter. Spot was barking happily, thrilled that he had fulfilled his mission. But he didn't! I'm sorry to interrupt again, but Spot didn't fulfill his mission. He helped Chaos win! What have I told you? about judging a story before hearing its end. That isn't the end of the story? No. You see, Mittens is known for that. One does not become Chaos Wrangler without learning a few tricks and being aware of your surroundings. You see, Mittens, what Mittens saw was that Fantail had planned to cast a spell that would bring Chaos into the Bronx, and the Bronx has enough of that as it is. 
was so dangerous, then why entrust the dog to convey so critical a message? Because the message was not as critical as Spot was led to believe. When Bob brought Spot back, the dog immediately found Mittens and started running around the cat, encircling him several times. I did it! 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 I told the black squirrel exactly what to do, just like you asked. He'll be at the World Tree at midnight, tracing the otter sigils. Mittens meowed affectionately and said, well done. But it wasn't well done. It was all wrong. Dogs are stupid. Yes, dogs are. They mean well, but they are forgetful and easily distracted and tend to mangle what they have been given, which was exactly why Mittens gave the instructions to Spot that he did, with special mention of Fantail. He knew that the dog would muck it up. That Spot used otter sigils instead of order sigils made the jest even greater, because the only way to recreate otter sigils on land is to writhe in the dirt, an amusing visual image that Mittens would treasure. So Spot was supposed to tell the black squirrel instead of the gray one? Not necessarily. If he got it right, no harm would be done. If Taildrop did trace the order sigils on the world tree at sunset, or at midnight for that matter, it would only strengthen the counterspell that Mittens himself was going to cast at dawn to stop Fantail. But now the Black Squirrel would be distracted by Spot's news and be even easier for Mittens to defeat. Mittens is a very clever cat. He has to be in order to be a proper Chaos Wrangler. So that is how Mittens was able to use Spot to stop Fantail from bringing more chaos into the world. But what about the pigeon? What? The pigeon, what happened to her? Oh, uh, well, eventually Mittens was able to explain to her what was going on. The pigeon was not pleased that she had gone to all that effort for nothing, but Mittens assured her that her objections to Spot only reinforced Spot's determination to do the right thing, that is to say, the wrong thing, by talking to the black squirrel. That mollified the pigeon, and she continued to do her job of scouting and observing and marking those things that warranted attention. And that ends the story. The sun's all the way up, so it's time for you to wash up and go to sleep. Make sure you groom between each one of your claws before going to bed. I will. Thank you for the story. You're welcome, little kitten. Uh, Sunday in the Park with Spot originally appeared in Furry Fantastic in 2006, which was published by Daw Books and edited by Gene Raby and Brian Thompson. It was reprinted in Without a License, my short story collection, which uh, is now available from eSpec Books. Uh, you can get the ebook of this for 99 cents during the pandemic. Um, Eastpec Books has a nifty little sale going on. and um, So please check that out if you're interested. Uh, there's other stories without a license that I've read uh, during this reading series and more that I will continue to read from this reading series. Uh, check me out online at dekendido.net. Uh, my blog is at dekendido.wordpress.com. And you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash crad, which has all sorts of neat stuff in it. Thank you very much, and please stay safe.